ever wonder how do athletes secure points in basketball or volleyball? Ball sports like basketball and volleyball utilize the concept of projectile motion. In this video lesson, we will describe the horizontal and vertical motions of a projectile. We will also solve problems involving projectile motion. Projectile motion is a two-dimensional motion influenced solely by gravity that has a non-zero horizontal velocity component. These objects simultaneously move in a vertical and horizontal directions. Many sports involve the projectile motion of a ball and much effort is spent on trying to control the motion for an advantage. A projectile is any object shot, projected, or launched in the air. It may refer to a ball, a rock, or even a particle. In this case, we consider a ball as the projectile. The motion of a projectile takes place in a vertical plane. When given an initial velocity, it follows a path mainly affected by gravity. Without gravity, any object thrown horizontally in the air will follow a straight path. But because of the gravitational force, it now allows a curved path. This curved or parabolic path followed by a projectile is called trajectory. As the projectile moves, it covers a vertical distance called height. On the other hand, the range is the horizontal distance covered by a projectile. Keep in mind that just like freefall, the effect of air resistance is also neglected in a projectile motion. The vertical component of a projectile is similar to a freely falling object. As it falls, the distance it covers increases per time interval. This means that its velocity increases at a uniform rate. The horizontal component of a projectile, however, is as simple as a ball rolling in a flat surface at a constant velocity. This is sometimes referred to as x-component since it moves along the x-axis or the x-direction. The time it takes for the projectile to cover the vertical distance is the same as the time it requires to cover the horizontal distance. So solving for time in one component is enough because it will also give you the time for the other component. Remember that the two components of a projectile are independent of each other, so they have different quantities except for time. For easier reference, x will be added to the subscript of the quantities for horizontal component, while y will be added to the subscript of the quantities for the vertical component. Also, the subscripts i and f will still be used to indicate the initial and final states. Since velocity along the horizontal component is zero, the initial velocity of a projectile is equal to its final velocity or to any velocity at any time interval. Since the velocity is constant along the x component, the object is not accelerating. Hence, the acceleration along x is equal to zero. Similar to any object moving in a straight line, the distance covered or the range of the projectile is equivalent to x equals vxt. For projectiles launched horizontally, an object thrown horizontally has a vertical motion similar to an object dropped from rest. Thus, it can be concluded that its initial velocity along the y direction is zero. Remember that the potential energy is highest at the maximum height. To solve for the other components, the four equations from the previous unit will be used. Only this time, instead of exclusively using vi and vf, a subscript y is added to emphasize that these velocities are along the y component or the vertical direction. Thus, vfy equals viy plus gt. y equals the quantity of final velocity plus initial velocity all over 2 times time. y equals vit plus 1 half gt squared and VFY squared is equal to VIY squared plus 2GY. Resultant velocity is the vector sum of the horizontal and vertical components of the projectile's velocity. It can be solved using VF squared equals VFX squared plus VFY squared. Let's try this example. 
A stone is thrown horizontally at a speed of 6 meters per second from the top of a cliff that is 70 meters high. How long does it take the stone to reach the bottom of the cliff? Let us use the Gressa method to solve this problem. First, identify the given in the problem. The initial velocity along x is equal to 6 meters per second. The height is negative 70 meters. The acceleration due to gravity that is equal to negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Note that the height and the gravity is negative due to the projectile's downward direction. And since the object is thrown horizontally, the initial velocity is equal to zero. The next step is to identify what is required to find in the problem. You are asked to calculate for the time it takes for the stone to reach the bottom of the cliff. Since you are only considering the motion along the vertical component, you can use the equation y equals vit plus 1 half gt squared. But since we are looking for the time, we need to derive the equation to get the formula for time. In the equation y equals vit plus 1 half gt squared, we know that the initial velocity is equal to 0. So vit cancelled out since 0 times time is equal to 0. We are left with y equals 1 half gt squared. From this, we can multiply both sides by 2 and divide both sides by g. Lastly, we need to get the square root of t and 2y over g to get the value for the time. Thus, the final equation is t equals the square root of 2y over g. From the derived equation, we can now substitute the values. So t is equal to the square root of 2 times negative 70 meters over negative 9.8 meters per second squared. By computing this, we can say that the stone took 3.78 seconds to reach the bottom of the cliff. Let's have another example. A PAF helicopter is flying with a horizontal speed of 12 meters per second distributing relief goods to the typhoon victim families. A family stranded on the roof of their house is about 8 meters below the chopper. At what horizontal distance should the relief goods be thrown in order that they reach the stranded family? Still, we will use the Gressa method. The given values are Initial velocity along x equals 12 meters per second. The height is negative 8 meters. And the acceleration due to gravity is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Again, the height and the gravity is negative due to the projectile's downward direction. And since the object is thrown horizontally, the initial velocity is also equal to zero. We are asked to find the average or the horizontal distance, so we will still use the equation x equals vxt. However, to solve for x, we need to find the time. The equation used to find time in sample problem number 1 is the same equation that we are going to use in this problem. To solve, substitute the given values that is equal to the square root of 2 times negative 8 meters all over negative 9.8 meters per second squared, which is equal to 1.28 seconds. Now, we can already solve for x. By substituting the values, we get 12 meters per second times 1.28 seconds. Cancel the units, and the relief goods should be thrown with a horizontal distance of 15 meters to be able to reach the stranded family. Now, it's your turn. Try this practice exercise. A toy car was thrown horizontally from the edge of the table at a velocity of 7.5 meters per second. If the table is 1.25 meters high, what is the toy's velocity just before it hits the ground? You may pause the video for more time. Here's the answer. Note that we have to get the negative root since the direction of the motion of the toy car is downward. Therefore, the velocity of the toy car just before it hits the ground is 8.99 meters per second downward.
Some projectiles are not thrown horizontally, others are launched at an angle. Unlike projectiles horizontally thrown, a projectile launched at an angle have an initial velocity both in the horizontal and vertical components. The initial velocity of the object launched at an angle from the horizontal can be separated to its x and y components. From the right triangle, the basic trigonometric functions are as follows. Sin theta is equal to the opposite side of the angle over the hypotenuse. Cosine theta is equal to the adjacent side of the angle over hypotenuse. And tangent theta is equal to the opposite side of the angle over the adjacent side of the angle. Now, if the sides x, y, and r are replaced by the components of the velocity, then the following quantities can be expressed as viy equals vi sine theta, vix equals vi cosine theta, and theta is equal to the inverse tangent of viy over vix. These equations are essential in solving for the components of the initial velocity and the projection angle. These trigonometric functions can also be found in a scientific calculator which will enable you to solve for projectile motion problems easier. Suppose that several projectiles with the same initial velocities were launched at different angles. All of it will follow a parabolic path given that any effect of air resistance is neglected. The time it takes to cover the horizontal distance is equivalent to the total time the projectile is in the air. As the projection angle increases, the maximum height reached by the projectile also increases. Thus, the projection angle and the maximum height of a projectile have a direct relationship. Another relationship that can be observed from the figure is that complementary angles result in the same horizontal ranges. To calculate for the resultant velocity of a projectile launched at an angle, we will still use the same formula final velocity squared equals final velocity along x squared plus final velocity along y squared. Since velocity along the horizontal component is zero, the initial velocity of the projectile is equal to its final velocity or to any velocity at any time interval. And since the velocity is constant along the x component, the acceleration is still equal to zero. To solve for the range, we use the formula r equals vi squared sine 2 theta over g, where r represents the range, vi is the projectile's initial velocity, theta is the angle of projection, and g is the acceleration due to gravity. This particular equation for range can only be used if the height of the projectile where it was released is the same as the height where it landed. Along the vertical component, the equations are the same since the object still undergoes freefall motion. Now, let's solve problems involving the motion of a projectile launched at an angle. A player kicks a football from the ground at an angle of 15 degrees as it follows a parabolic trajectory. If it was kicked at a speed of 27 meters per second and landed on level ground, how far did it travel horizontally? Again, we use the Gressa method to solve this problem. The angle theta, the initial velocity, and the acceleration due to gravity are given. We need to solve for the range. To do that, we will use the formula r equals vi squared sine 2 theta over g. By substituting the values, we get r equals the square of 12 meters per second sine 2 15 degrees all over negative 9.8 meters per second square. By simplifying it, we will get 37.19 meters. This means that the football traveled 37.19 meters horizontally from where it was kicked. Now, your turn. On a soccer game, a ball was kicked with an initial velocity of 30 meters per second with an angle of 20 degrees from the ground. Calculate for the range of the ball. Pause this video for more time.
To solve this, we will use the same process. By doing so, we will come up with the answer of 68.43 meters. Did you get it right? Let's summarize the lesson with the following key points. The projectile motion is two-dimensional motion influenced solely by gravity that has a non-zero horizontal velocity component. Resultant velocity is a vector sum of the horizontal and vertical components of the projectile's velocity. And the basic trigonometric functions of a right triangle are based on the relationship of the angle and length of its sides. The concept of projectile motion also reminds us that what goes up must come down. So always be humble. If you like more science videos, make sure to subscribe to this channel. Thank you and always remember that you are all awesome.